All right, so you want the dollars. And the question is, which programming language should you learn in order to get as many of those dollars as possible? Before we go into it, I'm just going to say to you that you should never do programming just for the money. Sure, the money is a great benefit, and I'm not going to lie or be a hypocrite. I like the money too, just as much as you will. But if you enter the programming space or the software development space just with money in mind, you're not going to make it because that comes across very, very quickly in the really rubbish software that you'll end up producing because you're not involved in the process. You just want the money. So you won't be successful. You'll actually be quite unhappy. Right. With that said, let's go on to the languages that you should learn if you want to make money as a programmer. The first question you should ask yourself is, do you want to maintain or do you want to create, let's say, new apps? That's the first question. And it's a very relevant question when it comes to learning programming languages because the main programming language that's used out there is Java slash Python. Python's catching up to Java, but for all intents and purposes, it's Java. Now, the reason Java is the most popular is because it was more or less the first programming language that you could write cross platform on. It didn't care what platform it was on. It could run on that platform. Linux, Windows, Mac, it didn't matter. And the reason I say that is because a lot of institutions chose Java because of that cross platform availability, as well as many other reasons. It's a decent programming language. And those institutions now have applications out in the wild that are running in Java. So they need people to maintain those applications. And typically these are very, very stable jobs. So someone looking for a Java developer, you could be there 10, 20 years. You can have a relatively light workload because there's nothing really new to create. Now, don't get me wrong, there will be new things as part of your job, but not anywhere near the level as if you'd chosen the creator side, which we'll get into in a second. So coming back to the maintainer side, if you choose Java, you're more or less guaranteed for the next 20 odd years that you're going to have a job available, perhaps even 50 years, perhaps even your lifetime, because things like banks run Java, cars run Java. Uh, if you look at Java's own website, they tell you a billion devices or three billion, I can never remember the number, run Java. Everything runs Java, Android included. So if you want to maintain stuff, generally speaking, and you want to go into a job, then Java is probably the choice for you. And it's not a bad choice because it's sort of the foundation on which a lot of other languages were based. Not programmatically speaking, I just mean the concepts. The other thing you can also learn apart from, let's write these down, Java, is you can learn Python. And I'm just gonna separate off this new app creation bit. So Java and Python, again, for the same reasons, Python has been around for a very long time and it's very useful for data segmentation. It's also very fast and it's very quick to create apps or scripts and things like that. That's why it's sort of neck and neck with Java these days in terms of market and mind share, because you don't have to write a whole program. You just write a Python script. So, Java and Python are great. If you want to create new software, you can also choose Java. So that's fine. You can have Java for both maintaining and creation of new software. But Java does have its foibles, and I wouldn't really recommend it for new software. There are other better recommendations, in my opinion. Python, it's not really a software language, so to speak. It's more of a scripting language. If you have whole massive data sets, then Python's the one for you. And Considering that the world is collecting more and more data on everyone and everything, I foresee Python as becoming the leader in the programming language space. Uh, it's not guaranteed, of course, but I reckon that's what's going to happen because there's so much data to process and Python is set up and is good at doing that. Now let's talk about the other side, which is the creator side. And this can either be for a job, it can be to make new apps for yourself. It can be for a startup somewhere. Whatever it is, all you're doing in this role is basically you're creating new things, more or less from scratch. 
If you're recreating something, that could also qualify as creating a new thing. So, you want to create some stuff. What language should you choose in order to be successful in future life and also to earn probably the most money? Well, when you're in the creation role, typically you get stocks, you get perhaps a profit share in the company, you might get a share of the company, you might own a share, or if you're creating it for yourself, you own the whole thing. So the language is not important in this case. If you have a grand vision for what you want to make, then you should choose the language that fits that grand vision. So each language has its own foibles, but pretty much you can make anything from any language. I, I wouldn't recommend scripting languages for proper software, of course, because they just run scripts simply and you'll get into a big mess really quickly. But if you're creating, realize that the value is in the software that you're making and the solution you're providing to people, not the language. With that said, here are my opinions on which language you should use for creation or which one you should learn. Now, I'm a little bit biased, I'll admit it, because I started with C Sharp. And C Sharp is a Microsoft language that they derive from C++ and I think a bit of inspiration from Java, but people will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I'm sure. And C Sharp was invented in the early 2000s, I believe, in order to correct all the things that Microsoft saw wrong with programming languages, and there were tons of things wrong. So C Sharp, and in relation to that, the .NET framework that goes with it, the .NET framework is what you use when you're programming Windows devices. C Sharp and .NET go hand in hand. .NET isn't a program, C Sharp it isn't a programming language, C Sharp is. With these tools, you will be able to create Windows applications as well as Windows Phone applications. C Sharp is quite an easy language to learn and understand, and there's a lot of resources out there. And at last count, there was something like 7 8% of developers used it, as opposed to 22% in Java. Now, having said that, C Sharp is very, very easy to learn, at least in my opinion. Java is actually fairly easy to learn. So you can also use Java to create new apps. So we have C Sharp and we have Java. Now the question is, when you, let's say you make a business and it fails, you need to get a job, you need to do some freelance work, chances are pretty high that you'll be able to get your freelance work in Java. Slightly lower for C Sharp, but it's still there nonetheless. And here's the tricky bit, and this is only something you can learn from someone that has experience, such as myself. And that is, which is gonna be more popular in 20 years time? No one knows, but I have an inkling it's actually going to be C Sharp. And the reason why is because Java code runs on an intermediate layer, an intermediate machine on a computer, which then runs on the computer. And that runs pretty fast. I've got no complaints about the speed of that. C Sharp runs more, more directly than Java, right? So C Sharp is just a fraction faster. But that's not the reason I'm choosing C Sharp. The reason that I would choose C Sharp to learn at first, if you are a creator, is because C Sharp is run by Microsoft, which is more or less one of the biggest corporations in the world. And they put a lot of effort into maintaining C Sharp. And I know this because I create apps all the time for mobile devices using Xamarin. And Xamarin allows you to create apps for iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and coming soon for Linux, for Mac OS, for Windows Desktop, using 50 to 90% of the same code, all written in C Sharp. So you don't have to learn Swift for iOS, you don't have to learn Java for Android, you don't have to then learn C Sharp for the desktop or any other languages for, uh, what is it, Linux or Mac OS or Objective-C. You don't have to learn any of that, you can just write them in Xamarin and it runs cross-platform. Right, so if you're a creator, Xamarin is a very, very good option because you can write once, 
and you can run almost everywhere. Obviously, it's more complicated and complex than that, but that's the basis of it. So I would say, if you are a creator, start with C Sharp. It's a very easy language to learn, and once you learn C Sharp, you'll have the basic fundamentals of other object-oriented languages, such as Java, so it'll make it much easier to learn. Now, that's the two differences. So if you want long-term, go with Java. If you want short-term and long-term, go with C Sharp. Those two languages I would use as my bedrock. The whole matter is different, of course, if you want to do other things, such as data analysis. In that case, I would actually go with Python, because as I said before, Python is really good at data analysis. If you're maintaining a web server, you're going to run into quite a lot of PHP. But I think that's actually on the way out, and it is being replaced by JavaScript. And it's JavaScript in many different forms, like Node.js, which runs web servers, or Angular, which is the front-end JavaScript framework that comes from Google for creating one-page websites, i.e. websites you load once, and then all of the navigation is done within that loaded page. So it doesn't call to your server, which makes it much more efficient than traditional web applications on HTML. So we got JavaScript, Python, PHP, and all of these kind of have their places. But if you're a web developer or want to become one, JavaScript is where it's at. Just know you don't get paid as much as a JavaScript developer compared to the traditional languages like Java, C Sharp, Python. PHP, I think, gets a bit more, but that's just hearsay. Swift, you get paid quite a bit. Okay, so that sort of covers a bit of the web stuff. And I hope what you're getting from this broadcast is that you have to choose the correct language that fits your situation. Do you want to maintain? Do you want to create? Do you want to create on the desktop? Do you want to create mobile apps? It all depends on what you need. And I'm just giving you an idea here of what to look for. The final thing before we go is to look at what's more popular, right? So at the moment, Java. Java leads the way. Then it's followed by Python. Then we go to PHP and JavaScript. And just below that, we have C Sharp. So to give you an idea of numbers, Java is about 22%, Python's 18, PHP 9, JavaScript 8, C Sharp is on just below 8. Below that, you've got other things like C++, C and R, which is a new language that's come out. But we'll get into that in a, a different uh, broadcast. Now, what's important to know about this list is that Python is way on the way up. It grew by about 4% of its 17%. So it actually grew in real terms by about 25% last year. And this is 2017 I'm talking to you from. Java actually dropped by about 1%. PHP also dropped by 1%. But JavaScript Whoops, JavaScript grew by about half a percent. And finally, C Sharp actually dropped, which is a mystery to me because there's more C Sharp programming going on. With that said, Java developers are in need in Europe. So you'll always find a job in Java at this point in time in Europe. Right, so I know I haven't exactly answered your question about how do I make the most money from programming languages? And I haven't an answered that because it's really, really tough to answer. It depends what you want. So sit down and think about what you want and need, what kind of developer you want to be, whether you're a creator or a maintainer, whether you're a web developer, app developer, desktop, or all of them, if you like. Get all of those data points and then decide what you're going to do. And then also take into account the fact of your future employment. You know, Java is always going to be around for at least 50 years. C Sharp pretty much the same. PHP, I'd be a little bit concerned about. JavaScript is on the way up. Python is strongly on the way up. And I think that's going to stay because of the masses of data being collected by companies without our permission.
you know, when you click that agree box in your subscription to iTunes, you're actually giving them loads of data. Anyway, I hope that's given you a bit of an insight and I'll leave this here. Do you want to win prizes with your newfound knowledge? If yes, then simply head over to imdev.net forward slash episode three and take the free two minute test based on this episode. If you pass, then you'll earn dev points, which can be redeemed for real products on our website. So to claim your points now, go to imdev.net forward slash episode three.